welcome to my classroom. I get asked a lot how, how I wash colors. And so we're gonna do a little quickie video on how I uh, get my colors clean and how I pat my colors dry. Here it is. So when I'm setting up my workstation to, um, to enamel, I've done my wire work and I'm gonna set up to enamel now. I have a, a, a white cotton dish towel. I like cotton or linen. And um, I'm gonna put this in my space. And then I want a piece of um, paper towel. So in all of my idiosyncrasies, of course I like a specific brand of paper towel. And I like the, um, the smooth Viva that is cloth-like, and I'm gonna put that on my workspace. So if while I'm enameling, I get too messy and I end up with too much uh, enamel spillage in this area, I can just take this uh, paper towel away and slide a new one in there, and I'm still gonna have a nice clean work area. Okay, then I have a little plexiglass hockey puck that I had made for me that I like to enamel on. Now I like the plexiglass because it's not as reflective. Uh, for 40 years I used a, um, a Petri dish like this to enamel on, which I really, really like. But um, the reflective um, qualities of this got to the point where they it really bothered my eyes as I got older. So, um, so these Petri dishes are wonderful to enamel on because you can keep everything so clean. But um, I've recently switched to this white plexiglass because it's uh, easier on my eyes. And then I have my water glass that I'm going to do my washing in. And this is filled to practically the brim with distilled water. And, um, and you may find that your own water at home is okay for, um, for washing your enamels in, but I have always used distilled water because our, our water here has a lot of minerals in it and I don't wanna risk contamination and any problems with my pieces um, by using tap water. So anyway, so this is distilled water. And I have a stir rod. I have my plastic spoons. So when I'm washing colors, I, um, I tap the color into my, um, my spoon instead of spooning it out of the jar because um, I don't want to contaminate my working enamel by um, sticking a spoon in here. And then you'll, you can see that there's some, some little uh, lumps in here. So those clumps of enamel, if you fire those clumps of enamel into your finished piece, you'll come up with a little cloudy spot. So I um, sometimes use my finger to um, crush those little clumps, or sometimes I use the end of my stir stick. You'll see me doing it both ways uh, in my lessons. And then I'm gonna dip my enamel underneath the surface of the water, and I'm gonna agitate this with my stir rod. And then I'm gonna pour off the excess. And um, what you see coming off the top of, of the water here is any um, debris that happens to have been ground into the enamel. Um, although the, the Japanese enamels are very clean compared to some of the enamels that I've used over the year. Um, and I'm gonna keep washing until 
I don't see much of that cloudy residue come off of here. So at this point, I would call that clean, and then I would use that. So now you notice how little enamel I have in the spoon. Most of the time, almost all the colors that you're going to use, you're going to use hardly any. So, um, so you you don't want to you don't want to wash more than you're going to use in one sitting because you're going to throw out anything that you don't use. I um, I don't ever put these back into my jar um, of working enamel. If I have a tremendous amount of enamel in here, I might try and save it in a separate little jar or something. But for the most part. Um, once I'm done for the day, I'm done. So I, I, I do save them overnight and re-wet them uh, if need be. Now, I'm going to put more enamel in the spoon over here. And uh, show you what the maximum amount is that you want to wash at any given time. That's it. That's that's pretty much the maximum that you're going to want to wash. Now, I'm not going to crush these little clumps of enamel because hopefully we'll see some clumps in the spoon that you uh, will learn to recognize as being something that you need to uh, manage before you put it onto your piece. Uh, I'm washing this darker color because uh, in the darker colors, if it's not washed completely, you'll see a little pool of lighter colored enamel. Um, and so realistically with these Japanese enamels, because they're so clean, what I'm washing out of here is the super fines, like stuff that is maybe 500 mesh or something. I'm trying to leave the, the 325 mesh because uh, I do so much shading and so much enameling in tiny little tight spaces that I need to have those small greens in order to accomplish what I accomplish. And as long as you don't apply your enamels too thick, those tiny grains are not going to cause cloudiness or bubbles in your piece. If you pile them on real thick, then you, um, you'll, you, you could experience some cloudiness, but even a, a 80 mesh is gonna cause cloudiness if you pile it on too thick, so. Okay, when I'm washing my colors, I always wash, if I've got 10 colors to wash, I wash the lightest colors first and work towards the darkest colors. And if I should happen to wash a color that has floating particles in it, um, then you may be able to sink a few, um, but you probably will want to change your wash water if you end up with floating particles because those floating particles will get into the next color if you if you leave them um, on, on the surface here. So okay, so you can see um, this enamel is, uh, this is super clean. I would go ahead and use this straight on a piece. This is basically a transparent black. Um, but you can see in this area right here that there's a little bit of enamel that's a, a little lighter of a color. And, um, and so there, that's an area where the, where the smaller grains um, are sitting. And um, if, you, if you have a lot of that, you're going to want to uh, give it one more rinse to, um, to, to get it as good as you can get it. Okay, this is, once you get your layer on, this is how you're going to dry it before you fire it in the kiln. Um, this is just a, a practice piece. This is uh, nothing important that we're doing here. I just want to show you this drying process. I'm not even going to fire this. Um, it's just a, a, a sample. Okay. 
Oh, I can't stand to leave that hard line. Let's fix that. Okay, and if, if while you're packing, uh, you, you end up with uh, water getting down onto your hard surface that, you're, that your piece is sitting on, let me, let me go ahead and do that. I've got, I've got some enamel that's over the edge now. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna continue to pull water off of the top of the piece and it's gonna make it very hard for you to um, get that smooth. So when that happens, I just move the piece over and, um, and get rid of the, the place where the, um, where the piece is touching um, where the enamel is touching the surface that I'm working on. And then when I want to smooth it out, I just tap on it and it, um, it gets the enamel to level. So now to dry it, I'm going to take a, um, a piece of toilet paper and I'm going to make myself a little um, blotter. And I'm going to lay that blotter on top of my enamel piece. And I'm going to hold it there for 10 or 15 seconds so that it has time to absorb all of the water out of the piece. Now, because this is a pretty dark color, you can see that it does pick up some grains of enamel. Um, although with your wires being on the, on the top, uh, in other words, your, your little uh, blotter is going to be resting on the tops of your wires, so it doesn't pick up as much enamel when you've got wire work in your piece. But even when I don't have wire work, um, I, I like to blot them like this. I rarely set my piece on top of the kiln to dry, because if it gets too dry, then when you pick it up to move it into the kiln, then the very dry enamel just cascades off of the edges of the, this domed slope. And, um, and so you, it, you'll actually work against yourself if you make them absolutely perfectly dry before you put them into the kiln. I like a little bit of moisture and um, not so much moisture that it's gonna boil, but enough moisture so that I can lift it up and get it into the kiln without that cascading uh, dry powder off the edge. Okay, so then I would just fire this and let it cool and then start with my next layer. So that's, that's my version of how to wash colors. And I'm almost positive that it was Margaret Seeler in like 1976 that showed me how to wash colors and spoons like this, and it and you 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 know by my work that I have no problem with clarity. Um, that the, this this method has worked for me for a long time. Okay, so that was that.